patch 1.6 has provided us with many much needed nerfs, as well as a few buffs to bring new decks into the meta. The new meta is starting to settle, so I thought it would be the perfect time to put together a new top 10 video looking at the highest win rates in the meta. I've done this vid slightly differently to previous ones and looked at unique arch types to avoid repetition this time. What this means will be obvious in the video. Ezreal Draven is a kind of interesting take on the Ezreal combo archetype. This is the only deck with less than 50% win rate, so you'll notice the rest of these decks on this list go much higher in win rate than this. This is actually the 10th unique archetype currently viable in the Masters tier, while other decks are just effectively variations of the decks in this list. This is the only deck in the top 10 archetypes that has a rubbish win rate, so ignore this figure for now and focus on what the deck actually does. This version of Ezreal Control runs a lot of spells, and they're very cheap ones to have a huge amount of activators for Ezreal, such as Ravenous Flock and Mystic Shot. Draven is there to get spinning axes to be used as a last resort to deal two more damage thanks to a leveled up Ezreal. These can also be discarded to draw more useful cards thanks to Rummage. Jump Pump also gives you two activators for Ezreal, with the possibility of dealing more damage to the Nexus with the Puff Caps. The rest of the game, you're basically controlling the board with removal, whilst trying to level up your Ezreal, and then winning the game with his leveled up ability. Shadow Wilds Piltover and Zorn Control has had a comeback into the meta, and it seems like control decks are emerging now that aggro has been turned down. This is your Karina Ledros deck that you may have seen in different formats before, working around a control style combo in late game. The key cards in this deck are Karina Vereza and Commander Ledros. Karina is there basically to wipe the board against basically anything, and for that reason this deck runs a lot of spells which are mostly removals from the best two regions at doing that. Then, Commander Ledros is here to grant infinite value and win the game through his Nexus Health halving effect. Other notable cards are Vi and Atrocity. Vi generates value while also synergizing with Atrocity, which can be used to deal 10 damage to the enemy Nexus and usually win the game. Bonus points if you can do this after Commander Ledros for a two turn lethal combo. So let me know if you ever actually achieve this and I'll give you a shout out. How's that sound? Deep Seas Monsters is surviving patch after patch since the release of Buildwater. The deck plan is very simple. Get to deep as fast as possible and summon giant sea monsters with crazy stats in late game to wipe out your opponent. Get to deep quick with cards like Dreg Dreggers and Dead Bloom Wanderer who toss cards right from the start of the game. As you reach mid game, bring out Maokai, then win thanks to Nautilus lowering the costs of all your deep sea monsters, or even Maokai who can toss all of your opponent's cards, two very nice win conditions with this deck. In late game, you can take advantage of Devourer of the Depths to obliterate your opponent's cards, devouring even bigger cards once you're deep, and Shepherd Hoarder providing you with overpowered treasures to win the game. This control deck has a simple theme, with every card either being removal, heal, toss, or even a win condition. They Who Endure is back. It went out of popularity with patch 1.4's nerf, but people have started to realise it's still quite a strong deck. It's a control deck that resolves around killing your low cost units to finish off by summoning a buffed up They Who Endure at the end of the game. The game plan is basically the same as it was before. Contest the board early with cards like Hapris Aristocat and Aravacent Sentry. The last breath package of Ravenous Butcher, Cursed Keeper and Blighted Caretaker also help to wipe out aggressive boards whilst getting your procs for your death total win condition. Nevergate Collector helps you stabilise against aggro and deal burn damage against control decks, all this whilst healing your nexus through drain. Finally, drop your They Who Endure 
when you can one-shot your opponent with one attack or use atrocity. However, never commit it unless you're going to lose or your opponent is trying to remove your they who endure. This should be absolutely a last resort. Lux Control with Fresh to help pull her from the deck is a new archetype in the meta. With the fall in popularity of Anivia Control, this control variant seems to be the favoured one over the old one. It features almost a 50-50 split of Demacia and Shadow Isles. Shadow Isles provides threats with its removal like Val Feast and Vengeance. Use these to take out any of your opponent's cards that you feel might be a threat. In late game, you have some bombs like Commander Ledros and the Rekindler. Use Ledros to halve the opponent's Nexus health and Rekindler to revive Fresh and Lux. A notable combo is Concerted Strike with Radiant Guardian which basically acts as a cheaper removal spell, which also heals, which is actually really good against aggro decks by keeping your nexus healthy, which is the main counter to them. This deck also includes three copies of Remembrance, which can summon further copies of Radiant Guardian, as this also costs five mana. Scouts has always been present in the meta, and now it can shine again as other aggro strategies are not as effective as this one. It's basically a mono Demacia with a splash of build water, as a very strong ramp to mid game with 34 cards costing 1 to 4 mana. From build water, you'll be looking for misfortune. Try to level her up as quick as possible, which is easily accomplished thanks to scout units like Grizzled Ranger and Quinn. If you still haven't leveled up Misfortune, in the later game you can use Genevieve Helmhart, who was buffed in patch 1.4, to help close the game and buff your allies even further, which will really help with those mid-range combat fights. Single combat should be used in response to a removal to get even more value from your own unit. Ranger's Resolve to counter an AoE effect, and Repulsate should be used on the first attack of a scout unit so that it gets the bonus attack twice without dying. If you feel these cards will be useful against the opponent's deck, keep them. If not, mulligan them away to smooth your curve by having better units in your hand instead. So you'll be looking for certain spells for certain deck scenarios. Ezreal Twisted Fate has remained popular as it has avoided the nerfs from this patch. It features cards from Buildwater and Piltover and Zorn with a low average cost with 37 cards costing 4 or less mana. This is mostly a combo deck which can help you get to late game thanks to all its removal cards like Mystic Shot and Make It Rain. Once you reach late game you can then set up the win condition, Ezreal. Effectively you are targeting the enemy with lots of spells to easily level them up and spam damage with his leveled up effect. Cheap spells like Warning Shot should be used as Ezreal procs or even a Riptide Rex activator. The Powder Kegs should be used on your cards like Make It Rain or even Twisted Fate's red card. If you have an extremely good game, you can even pull it off on Riptide Rex and run through this way. Frostbite Midrange is a new archetype that has been arising this patch. Although it's been known about for a long time, aggro has meant it was not consistent so midrange decks are only just starting to come through. This deck is themed around cards with 5 or more power. Always keep Ash and Sejuani in your opening hand as the central pieces for your game plan, especially if you're actually summoning them on an attacking turn as they both have effects that benefit from being played whilst attacking. Against more aggressive decks, Mulligan for early board presence, so cards like Icefell Archer for example, or even Arison Trapper who in turn can create an Enraged Yeti. A Rage Yeti is perfect as it can lead to a super early reckoning to shut down their game plan starting from turn 4 if you have banked mana. In every case, you should be always looking for your value generators. Trafarian Assessor draws a card for every 5 power plus card you have on the field and Harsh Winds, which can frostbite two units to help level up Ash and keep your powerful units alive. And that's effectively your game plan. Lots of 5 power plus units and winning through this kind of synergy effect. 
Tempo Sejuani has grown in popularity over the last patch, and after the nerf to other strong contenders, it has left this archetype untouched, and it was only natural for it to take over. It features Buildwater cards with support from Feyljord, with card costs ranging from 0 to 7+. Always keep Misfortune and Sejuani in a hand as this is a tempo deck. So even though they're not the best for curve, they generate immense value and are simply too much to lose. So even if this means having a few weaker turns while having a weaker starting hand. Most of the cards in this deck are aggressive, like Jagged Butcher and Ruthless Raider, which provide decent damage for low costs. Although it's tempting to go for a warning shot into Jagged Butcher on turn 1, try to keep the Plunder Activator for those cards with a far bigger return for that investment, such as Riptide Rex and Citrus Courier for example. Also try to damage the Nexus every turn as a leveled up Sejuani on turn 6 is basically a win condition. Discard Burn is finally viable, something I've wanted to see for a while. The deck consists mainly of Piltover and Zorn, featuring 12 Noxus cards for support. The deck has a very low average cost, with 32 cards costing 3 or less mana. The two champions in this deck are Draven and Jinx. After the changes, we have more control of what to discard thanks to new upgrades like Zornin Urchin and some Dredger to use alongside the old favourites such as Rummage. Use these discard effects on cards which benefit from being discarded, like Vision and Flame Chompers for example. The theme of this deck is basically playing cards for free, while still drawing other cards and not to finish our fuel off too soon. We're going to draw a lot of cards thanks to the three mentioned methods above, and also thanks to a leveled up Jinx and Augmented Experimenter. There are several benefits from draw synergies as well, like a Suit Ademic, and Suit Up, which are fantastic value in this deck's playstyle. This is an aggro burn deck, so it plays very fast and actually has the best win rate in the meta at the moment, and Bomber TV's actually done a video already on this theme, so please check it out. Bomber and I have decided to do this vid slightly differently to our previous videos, so this only looked at the best performing decks in Masters tier and only considered decks that have been used over 50 times. There are many decks that have high win rates, but low play rates, so some of the best meta decks at the moment didn't actually appear on this list due to having a lower win rate. I will cover the best meta decks in my next video, so look out for this next week. What deck are you having the most luck with so far in patch 1.6? I would love to hear about this in the comments. Please like and subscribe guys, and I'll see you next time.